and I want to address critical issues. One, it is very important to note that we are internationally acclaimed as a country in Namibia to make peace everywhere. I personally had impressed upon the Mozambican opposition to stop the war in Mozambique. Successfully, Renamo has heeded our call. They have silenced the guns in Mozambique. I am just coming from a year ago chairing a conglomeration of opposition parties in the DRC, uh, Congo, where I was urging the political, the fragmented opposition to join hands. And I'm very glad to report progress that after the meeting that I chaired in Gore Island, Senegal, 2016, that the opposition in the DRC today has decided to have one opposition candidate to target the candidate of Kabila in the DRC election. So your party is doing something internationally. We are robustly engaged with our colleagues in Zimbabwe to say that they must continue to do good and not take the country to war and they have heeded our calls in Zimbabwe is moving to store stability with a number of economic problems. So we are making peace every way across the globe. But I always say that charity begins at home. It does not help that we only talk about making peace in Madagascar as a country and elsewhere, but we do not make peace here at home. And I want to bring the picture closer to home, here in the region of Zambezi. The region of Zambezi, as we are speaking, is the most polarized region in terms of tribalism. It's the most divided, if there is a country, part of the country that is mostly divided, is the region of Zambezi. So what are we doing as leaders that are making peace everywhere, across the world, across the region, what are we doing to make sure that the brothers and sisters here in the Zambezi region are starting a reconciliation effort that is meaningful, that is genuine into the future? Yesterday I had a privilege of meeting religious leaders in the very same hall here. And I also had a privilege to visit some traditional authorities to which I impress upon them that the tribalism in this region the polarization of the isms and the differences that we have in this region cannot be left unaddressed. We must find peace and bring peace to this region. We must find lasting reconciliation. Because when we are hiring each other in offices, we look at who, who you are, which village you come from, which tribe you come from. And I say that we cannot be peacemakers across nations if we cannot make peace internally in our own country. To that end, I would start a, a peaceful initiative, whether it will take us three, four, five years, but it's an initiative that I'm willing to start, to start a true dialogue of peace, of repenting, of reconciliation in the region of Zambezi. Because we cannot allow our children to grow in a country where a region is characterized by tribalism, where there is hatred, where there is hatred about where you come from, which village you attend, which school you go, which church you go. And I want to urge regional leaders in this region not to shy away to speak about repenting, repenting on the wrongs that were done politically in this region, reconciliation that is meaningful for the benefit of the future generations of members of this region. Because I do not want to see a part of our country so polarized, so divided, across the isms. And we have seen, I've just returned from Rwanda, where I had the opportunity to visit some of the museums in that part of the country, where I've seen over 300,000 skulls of Rwandese lying and enmeshed together because of hatreds of, tri of, of tribes. We have seen what, has, what tribalism has done to Rwanda. And if the Rwandese has achieved in bringing peace in their region, who are we? not to bring peace in our region. We need to start this dialogue. We can't afford to have this polarization for longer in this region. That's one. Two, it is very important that we should note, I happen to chair the Committee of on Africa on Trade, Customs and Immigration on behalf of the Pan-African Parliament. And it is very disappointing that we have not done so much to really accelerate trade, intra-Africa trade between our two countries. Maize meal, a bag of maize meal 
in Zambia, just across the river, cost $100. Here, on the other side of the river, it is $106.75. So it is cheaper to buy maize from Zambia. And people of this region can be better off if they are allowed to trade with Zambia and be able to buy maize for cheaper the price into this region. The same with the people that are living next to Angola, that they are smuggling fuel from Angola because it is cheaper. And we need to bring about intra-Africa trade that addresses and is and the burden on the African consumer. Why should Zambezi consumers buy more for maize, for a stable food product, while across the river they can get it cheap? So we must, the Minister of Trade, the Africa Continental Free Trade Area must be implemented so that we make sure that many of our people can buy products cheaper and we accelerate intra-Africa trade. Because if you look at the volumes of intra-Africa trade, Africa trades more with outside partners, with, more with Europe than it trades with itself, more with China than it trades with itself. And I think we need to do more to accelerate intra-Africa trade to make sure that African consumers are is uh, their, the burden on their on, on their consumption is is by promoting a much more free flow of goods and services between our borders because people in the Zambezi are struggling. Petrol prices are high, electricity prices are going off over the roof. Jobs are, are hard to find in this country, but yet when people want to find a cheaper maze, they cannot be able to access it because of stringent. Uh, uh, rules, uh, trade barriers that are between our nations. And to that end, I think that I want to call upon the Namibian government to make sure that Namibians in this part of the world can be able to access maize cheap, cheaply so that they can be able to, to make ends meet in this part of the world. Members of the media, our organization, the Popular Democratic Movement, is geared towards making a difference when it comes to the next 2019 election vote. This is an organization that wants to urge the Namibians, many of them that are bereft of opportunities, that are already saying that it's better to have a no vote than to have a vote. I want to urge Namibians that a no vote is no solution to the polls, because a no vote will be able to, to manifest the current ruling party to remain the ruling party. We are saying we are urging thousands of Namibians to vote differently to vote for this movement because we can be able to deliver the change that is needed. <laughs> Talk about good practices. What works in your region could not work in another region. So by cross-fertilizing and learning from one another, we would be able to find the best result. Uh, one thing that I always tell the leadership in Vindu is that I do not want a political party to belong to one person, political party to belong to the leader or to the regional coordinator or to the secretary general. A movement must always be a people-centered movement. And all our strategies must be geared at involving the people in the movement. So I do not want two strong leaders in an organization. That the president is so powerful, for example, that nobody says anything against the president. That the regional coordinator is so powerful in the region that nobody can say anything against the, the, the regional coordinator. The people must always be the front bearers and the torch bearers of our movement. And everything that we do and say must be geared towards uplifting the social economic trajectory of our people. The party cannot belong to Benani, it cannot belong to Katibombe, it cannot belong to whoever regional coordinator or the secretary general of the women's league the party must be centered around the population the people of namibia so when we are uh, when we are welcoming our consultants that are here uh, we are welcoming them to share their best experiences you are all political operatives they have experience that they have worked with a number of parties in africa in latin america and elsewhere but we also have experience on the ground. So let's share our experience with their experience and we compare notes and we see how best we can work together to take our country forward. I'm very glad, Mr. Secretary General, that you insisted that as leader I must be at this workshop. I was saying, why, why, what should I come and do here? But I think you were very right to say that because you are the general of the, 
of the of the fort come and sit down with your core generals as you are chatting and planning the way members of the media Colin Michaukwa I'm glad to see you you're one of my favorite journalists in the capital glad to see you I am also on the periphery to, to visiting the Impalela Islands one part of the country that I have not visited I will make time to visit the Impalela Islands while I'm here uh, primarily because in the PDM we are saying we must deserve the vote of the people we must deserve the trust of the people and I don't want to be a leader and nor do I want core leaders to be leaders that only want to be elected go and serve in Parliament and not deserve the people's vote and this time around we should prove to this country we should go out every corner of this country try all the tricks in the book to deserve the trust of the people I tell you I'm the first presidential candidate hopefully to be elected by the party I hope the party will elect me I'll be the first presidential candidate to visit in Balela Islands seeking a mandate from them I know there are only 300 400 people on that island but it's an island that I nevertheless want to visit because I want to lead Namibia and if all Namibians are in the farthest corners I want to reach out to them and all our leadership here they want to be future members of parliament they want to be future councillors they want to be future future ministers. ministers they must also go out every corner every village and I always tell people that there is no gain without sacrifice if we do not sacrifice absolute sacrifice for the people's trust and vote we are not going to achieve so colleagues i'm also going to visit this morning i'm told i'm visiting also a a chieftaincy that has invited me to have a one-on-one -on -one with them so i might not be fully attentive to the activities of the workshop but i will hope to join in as i return because i'm also a hard worker i also want to sit and to be trained together with you on these new strategies very interesting to learn what other parties have succeeded in doing but i want us to be in a spirit of collegiality uh, in a spirit of hopefulness we must when we say high discipline we must have discipline when we say high morale we must have the morale and the fortitude to want to bring a change to the people of namibia we should be the movement we are the movement that wants to bring change into the lives into the life trajectory of namibians we shouldn't shy away we should be at the political forefront. We shouldn't be at the peripheries. I don't like leaders that are at the periphery. Be at the center of things. And let's try to move Namibia forward. As we are saying, let's move. If we say PDM, let's march forward. Let's move forward to take our people out of the socio-economic doldrums that they are finding themselves into a new social economic trajectory that brings a new order. I want to end by saying there is a big problem in this country. Every time when a young person is looking for a job in this country, you are told, where is your experience? Members of the media quote me correctly. We must end the culture of asking for experience for jobs. Because there are no jobs. Where will the people get experience? Where will they get the 10 years of experience? We are saying any job that is available in this country must be given to the sovereign wealth of our people, which is the young people, without experience, so that they gain experience and take our country forward. Because this thing of just hiding away from experience, experience, and we are not giving jobs to people would not work. Discipline! High discipline! High